Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. It's Eva from Bohemian Crafting and today I'm coming to make some something for those three signatures. My son uh, Jacob, he's crafting sometimes with me and this is what he prepared actually. That's that's his work and I didn't give me not even one advice what to do. He just put these pages together. He did what uh, I mean, he, he went have a look on Pinterest, on Etsy, on YouTube and he put this together amazing work and he pink me that and he said mom wrap it up somehow <laughs> so i'm gonna do some wrapping for these amazing signatures i love his layering all these pages and when how he used these book pages and pages as an extra writing spot or as an as an pocket so I do have base, three signatures, and I'm going to make this as a journal. I have bring few things I'm going to be using to wrap up these gorgeous signatures. So it will be this old dictionary book because I just love to use all these old book pages. I'm going to be used serial, serial box, uh, fabric, I think it's called a linen fabric large envelopes maybe i will add also smaller envelopes i will see and i do have here these beautiful stencils <clears throat> these are for home decor but i think i can somehow mix and match it to create some decoration on my book cover as well as a first i'm gonna prepare those large envelopes i took two of them for this journal one i will use as an extra pockets that's what you can see now. Uh, I glued the flap on that envelope. Then I folded that envelope on half and cut it on two pieces with my scissors. This, uh, these two pockets I will be using as an extra pocket for this journal. I will add there also extra small, I mean like uh, small envelopes to make extra flip outs. The second envelope I'm gonna be using uh, as a holder for my signatures and also an, uh, as an extra pocket on the front and on the back of that book. So I'm starting same way, I'm gluing the flap on my envelope, then cut the edges of, of that envelope. Not to cut it on two pieces, but cut just the edges to create one large sleeve from that envelope. And that's I'm going to use as a holder for my signatures. Here you can see how it looks like. So this will be holding all three signatures. I'm going to be using a little bit different type of binding for my signatures. And for that I need three strips for each signature one strip. I'm using just chipboard from that Cereali box and I'm cutting one quarter of inch strips from this Cereali box. They are, they are same long uh, as that envelope, I mean uh, same tall as are my signatures. These strips uh, I'm going to wrap to the fabric to make them kind of like beautiful and uh, on these strips, I will later to sew my signatures. You will, you will see that in the process. So all three strips, I'm gonna wrap up to this uh, blue striped envelope. Um, envelope, sorry, blue striped striped fabric to add there some texture and color, and also make these strips uh, kind of like stronger and uh, hold my signatures much much better way here I just cut it extras to make those strips beautiful all of them I wrapped exactly the same way once I had wrapped these three strips into that blue uh, blue fabric I took another fabric this is Utah fabric what you can see uh, on the screen and I did cut <coughs> that Utah fabric in the leg of these strips and I cut three strips of that Utah fabric I think it was one and a half inch wide and each of these strips I'm gonna 
glued in the middle of that yuta fabric. These uh, yuta fabric strips will also later hold uh, those extra pockets from envelopes. It sounds complicated, but this is actually very easy, uh, very easy way how you can bind your signatures and add their extra uh, envelopes and extra pockets and make sure they will hold really well because that fabric is nice and strong. I hope you will like this process. So each signature, <clears throat> I uh, in each signature I poked three holes and I used only simple stitching. I think it's called pamphlet stitching, but I'm not sure. I will try to have a look and I will write down all, all the names, important names. Here you can see I poked uh, same holes in that uh, fabric slash Cereali box uh, base for my signatures and I'm gonna just very simply sew one signature to one of these strips. So I'm starting in the middle, <clears throat> going from the inside of my signature in the middle hole to bottom hole in my signature going up to top hole in that signature and the back to that middle of a hole in that signature and just making the knot. My explanation maybe is a little bit crazy but I hope you will understand from the video what I'm doing. And I did all three signatures exactly the same way. Here you can see. I put all signatures to the order how I want to see them uh, in my book and then I took <clears throat> the base I created from that large envelope. I took the signature which I want to have in the middle because I do have only three signatures. I'm starting with the middle one and I'm going to glue this uh, signature with that fabric base to my envelope, to the middle of that envelope. So I'm using uh, multi-purpose glue because it's holding well and it's drying so fast. I added the glue only in the middle of that fabric strip, not on the sides. Those sides have to be free because they will hold later my envelopes. Here you can see how I am folding that Utah fabric to make sure it will don't get glued to the envelope on the bottom. I'm editing glue right next to that first signature I just glued down and on this glue I will glue another signature. I will make sure that that Utah fabric will be folded up and it will don't get glued to the bottom. To the bottom is going to, to be glue only that uh, sewing of my signature. I hope my explanation it's not too confusing. Exactly same process I'm doing with that third signature, putting only one strip of glue and that brown Utah fabric I'm holding up to make sure it will don't get glued to the base envelope. And here you can press pretty nicely to that uh, blue striped fabric to make sure those signatures will get glued nicely. Then <clears throat> I decided to add those beautiful book pages to my envelope base to make it a little bit more beautiful and also strong. And later I will uh, decorate it a little bit more. This was just uh, starting to decorate or to add there some kind of vintage, uh, vintage look. I also glued those first and last Utah fabric um, edges and here you can see uh, where those envelope pockets will be glued. First I'm going to create uh, kind of like extra flip outs on these uh, envelope pockets. So I'm taking smaller envelopes and just gluing them on my 
large envelope pocket and I'm creating extra flip out. For project like this, you can use any kind of envelopes uh, if you will fit them in your journal by size. They are always best to use. And uh, I like to decorate my envelopes. Uh, here I will use book pages to add there a little bit more strong feeling and I will also use those stencils I prepared for this journal and I will add there a little bit more decoration using those stencils as well. For making those envelope uh, flip out look a little bit more vintage I will be using distress inks and here you can see how I will add my extra pockets to that journal. Uh, I'm gonna use I'm gonna be using glue stick for gluing my extra pockets into that into that journal so i'm editing the glue on the bottom of my large envelope pocket and i'm gluing that pocket between those two uh, fabric ends between that utah utah fabric i do have always two of these fabrics next to each other because i glued uh, those uh, signatures next to each other I hope this what is in that video will be understandable. It's really very easy to do so. Same way I glued into my book that second flip out pocket. And that way, because I used also in the base of these fabric uh, holdings, I used that chipboard, those chipboard strips. It makes beautiful, uh, beautiful spine already now. I decided to do also headbands, I think it's called headbands, where you can see on vintage books uh, where the signatures are sewn. For my headbands, I'm gonna make kind of like fake headbands. I'm gonna be using again that blue striped fabric and I'm cutting from uh, that chipboard uh, from that serali box, I'm cutting small strips. I'm always gluing two together and I'm making kind of reinforced two strips. I will need one for the top and one for the bottom of the spine uh, of my book. These small strips I will be wrapping to that blue uh, fabric to kind of match it with the fabric which is underneath of my signatures. It's a very easy way how you can create the look of vintage headbands. And it also will put a strength to the spine of that book because of the fabric. And again, I'm using this uh, multi-purpose glue because it's a really good one. It's holding well and uh, it's drying very fast. I will add uh, all information to that description box below, also the name of this glue. I found it in one below uh, shop here in, uh, in Rodrem. It is a shop in UK where you can buy, where you can buy uh, cheaper products, any kind of products. So first I wrapped one piece on the top of my strip, uh, other one I'm gonna wrap on the bottom of my strip and I'm making sure that the strip of that uh, fabric will be not shorter or longer than is the spine uh, of my book block, already sewn book block. So just easily wrap it up and then I added the glue on the spine of my book block. I started on the bottom, but it doesn't matter where you will start. Just add there a glue on the spine of your book block and add there that chipboard strip wrapped into that fabric and it will create a really beautiful headband. I glued also those, side, uh, those sides of the fabric to that book block to make sure it will be not visible once I will glue uh, my book cover on, on all this. Then I glued that bottom part to the bottom of, this, of my spine and same I did with 
those si uh, sides of that fabric. Then I glued that fabric uh, on all that space around, uh, I mean, on, on the spine and around to make sure it will hold nicely. And if it will be a little bit wrinkle, it's it's not affecting your book because it will be not visible. Here I cut the pieces which will create the front, back, uh, the front cover and back, back cover of my book. And also I cut it one white strip to make a spine, extra spine for my book. And I'm scoring this uh, strip on my scoring board every each uh, every one one eighth of inch <laughs> line I'm scoring I'm, I'm making this spine kind of like uh, soft and easy to fold so once I had scored uh, all that middle of that chipboard piece I started to create my extra spine I had to fold it uh, around my already sewn book block to make sure it will be not too small or not too big. So that's why I, I made so many score lines. I don't mind if I made too many, but I made <clears throat> so many score lines to make sure I will uh, I will be I will uh, have easy work to to create extra spine. So once I was satisfied with the size of that extra spine for my book I folded it nicely that that spine and on those sides I glued my extra chipboard pieces which will create front and back cover so once I had <laughs> put together the base for my uh, for the cover of my book I took again uh, all my fabrics and from that Utah fabric I cut the piece which is much wider than is the spine of my book because I wanted to create kind of like wrapping around that spine and then I cut from that white linen uh, fabric two pieces one for the front cover and other one for the back cover of my book all these three pieces I decided to sew first uh, into one large piece so that Utah fabric will be in the middle and it will cover the spine of my book and those white pieces will be on the side. For that sewing I used only uh, simple straight, straight stitching and I did that stitching on my sewing machine. Here you can see very easy just one large piece with that Utah fabric in the middle and because uh, that white fabric it's very transparent it's like semi-transparent fabric uh, I decided to cover first my chipboard uh, book cover with those old book pages and then on on all this composition I glued that fabric Here I had to make sure that the Utah fabric will be on the both sides evenly. So I made it, uh, I think, three to three times I tried to place it on the right spot. It wasn't just exactly the way, <laughs> as you can see in, in that video. It took me quite a while. Then I cut <clears throat> the fabric around and I started to glue fabric uh, that fabric to my chipboard piece. First I cut strips around those corners to make sure that the corners will be uh, covered with fabric nicely. I glued these corners first and then I glued the rest of that fabric to my chipboard piece. And because I do have very light cover, I decided uh, to reinforce that cover with the book pages and use those book pages also to create an extra additional decoration I do love when the book pages are peeking around from the journals and I can actually uh, get this look by gluing book pages inside in my cover and let them to lean a little bit off the edge of that book cover to create that uh, extra extra look of the book pages 
speaking from my from my uh, from my book cover. I'm gluing two layers of these book pages to create kind of um, very fluffy or very grungy ripping paper all around of my of my book page uh, of my book cover. Once all my all these layers was uh, dry, I started to fold my book cover to make sure uh, I can, I will find the right spot where I should glue my book block. Before I <clears throat> I will be gluing my book block inside that cover, I decided to decorate it because it's always much more easy when I can place it flat. Uh, to decorate it and I'm gonna be using my uh, stencils to create there also some writing right now I'm using my old ink pads uh, walnut stain and ground espresso to add there a little bit of shade of vintage look and here you will see how I am using my stencils to create a little bit different design than is on those stencils I'm just moving that stencil the way where I will create uh, what I want to create on my book so I move the design here and there uh, I swap the look of these uh, these images on my stencil to create my own layer of that book cover and I used I think three different stencils to create <clears throat> that book cover it's very easy to do you just have to uh, be careful do not put your ink to the spots where you don't want to I add there here and there just a bit a uh, bit ink or to the spots where I <laughs> didn't want to see it actually so next time it will be good if I will put underneath some paper some extra paper to cover it see right next to that crown uh, I had a small <coughs> a small mistakes with my inking uh, I realized that luckily so I started to use extra paper to minimize my wrong stenciling and with this layering my stencil I'm creating my own design on my book cover using those beautiful stencils these home decor stencils are amazing to use for our journals I know they are a little bit more bigger than our journal covers but, but as you can see you can always make different layers using maybe just one word or using maybe just one image from that stencil and you can totally create your own design and here again I'm using underneath a piece of paper to minimize my mistakes with that stenciling and here I'm taking third stencil because it does have beautiful bottom images and they will kind of finish that look of my stenciling really nicely I do enjoy to use my stencils but uh, it sometimes takes a time when I do realize that I don't have to use that stencil the way it is I can change it all the time so as my uh, next step is gluing that book block to my book cover so I try to make a nice position it's always good uh, I didn't add the glue on the spine of that book block that book block will be not glued to the book cover on the spine uh, spine space but the front and the back will be glued uh, permanently to the book cover so uh, it's better to glue it when the book is closed like this and uh, I decided to add there a little bit more embellishment so here I'm taking my uh, VR memory keeper crocodile and I'm punching the holes always on the top and bottom corner of that uh, Utah fabric and I will be editing their eyelets and then through to those eyelets I will uh, add Utah string to make some more extra decoration I did exactly same uh, on the front and on the back cover just when you are punching uh, through the covers make sure that all pages are moved that they are not on your way uh, with that punching the holes 
Here you can see how I am editing that Utah string through to that uh, through to those eyelets. I've wrapped that Utah string uh, like twice around. And then I made a knot. And finished my decoration. I'm very slow in that video. Yeah. <laughs> I did exactly the same decor on the back cover with twice wrapping that Utah string through to those eyelets and making a knot. And for the decor, uh, <clears throat> first I was thinking maybe I can do something new, but uh, I do have so many beautiful embellishments I have created in the past. So I was just uh, digging in my drawer and I did pull out a key ring, I think it's called a key ring paper circle, which my son Jacob stamped for me. I love these circles very much. They do look amazing. So I uh, hung that, uh, that circle using a ball chain. I, I think it's called ball chain. So I hung that circle uh, through to the, one of these eyelets and then I used uh, charm which I created long time ago uh, the star kind of like rusty star and that was all my creation and here is the journal where I used uh, in which I used my son's signatures it needs just a few more you know, steps maybe at the book page here or decorated somehow inside. Add there some embellishments, also some tags and things into the pockets. And I think that's pretty good. <laughs> Do I do love these signatures. They are awesome, really awesome. And I think I did not know I didn't glue it good. So we do have openings. I will also need to decorate these windows somehow. But for now... I think I'm done. My signatures are holding well. I do have the finishing here, those headbands here and here in the color which I used for sewing my papers. I do have reinforced these sides. I also glued those pockets between fabrics so it should be strong enough to hold so much stuff. And I really love these pages. They are awesome. Really awesome. So that's our journal. Done. And I will need to add a few more decorations and tags. But that is done. I hope you did enjoy this tutorial or process sharing. I hope you found some inspiration. Thank you so, so much for stopping by today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Have a beautiful day, take care about yourself and I will see you soon. Bye!